Hello everybody. Every... Okay, wow. I cannot speak tonight already. Well then, I thought I would just do a video on my rewritten chapter 5 of book 1, The Dragon's Son, in the Tales of the Wolvelin series. Which it looks like I need to put that right there at the top. Tales of the Wolvelin. W-O-V-L-E-N. This chapter does not have a title right now because I have completely changed the chapter from what it originally was. Uh, so those of you who have read my book will notice that right away. It's completely changed. The reason I did that is the original chapter came from a completely random person's point of view. It didn't jar the reader at all, no one has ever complained about it, but whenever I went through it, I realized you only meet this person one time, basically, and you never ever meet him again. And so there was no reason to have it from his point of view, it would be make much more sense to have it from someone else's point of view that is a regular character in the book. So I completely changed it. And I have to say, I think it is so much better now. You get it, it fleshed out a lot more about some of these characters. So if you've read the book already, I hope you agree with me. If not, or even if you do, if you do or do not agree with me, just throw that in the comments. Um, anyway, uh, if you've not read the books, this should be a good introduction to these characters. This will be the first time these characters have been introduced in the book. And so I'd love to know if you think that I fleshed them out well, or if there was any sort of problem that you saw with it uh, as a reader or listener in this case. This still has yet to go to a professional editor and whatnot. So yeah, it's still a little bit rough, but it's had several passes, so it's readable. <laughs> Okay, so as I said, chapter 5, no working title yet on it. Erewhon, please hurry. I need my hair braided right now, braided with these flowers. Erewhon peeked out from behind the dressing curtain at her little sister. I'm barely awake, Annika, much less dressed. Give me a moment. She ducked back behind the dressing curtain and smiled when she heard her younger sister huff. I've been waiting for five minutes now. Erewhon pulled a grey woolen pinafore over her underdress, flipping her long golden hair over her shoulders. What is your hurry? The milk cow isn't that anxious to see you. She wrapped a worn leather belt around her waist. You know exactly what my hurry is. Annika stomped her foot on the floor. And I'm sorry, but I'm not helping you milk that cow. She's mean and crazy. There was a slight pause, followed by a sigh. I promised I would meet Mara at her house and walk her to town. Erwan stepped out from behind the curtain and narrowed her green eyes at her sister. The thin, gangly girl's cheeks reddened the slightest, her big blue eyes fluttering with a coy smile. Her older brother Jeffrey might be there. The fourteen-year-old twisted the toe of her shoe on the floor, tucking a bouquet of flowers behind her back. Erewhon rolled her eyes, despite a smile creeping onto her face. She stepped forward and grabbed Annika by the shoulder, spinning her around. Well, we wouldn't want to keep Mara waiting, would we? With expert skill, Erewhon tied Annika's auburn locks into an assortment of twists, weaving them all together with a few flowers into one long, thick braid. There, fit for a proper princess, if you ask me. Now, run right along, don't disappoint Mara. Or Jeffrey. She laughed as Annika wrapped her into a big hug, then dashed out the door of their humble cabin. Erewhon closed the door, then pulled her lawn oh, my bad, then pulled her blonde, wavy hair back, tucking it into a headscarf. She nibbled on the warm breakfast porridge Annika had cooked for them. Once finished, she grabbed a bowl full of scraps off the table and an empty bucket sitting by the door before stepping outside into the fresh morning air. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath. 
The loud bellow of a cow made her sigh, twisting her lips into a frown. Demanded bright and early as usual, she growled under her breath. Several chickens charged across the middle of the small village toward her door, all clucking expectantly. She turned the bowl of scraps upside down, dumping an assortment of food crumbs on the ground for the chickens to eat and scratch. She set the bowl down by the door, then sauntered toward a large, large community barn at the edge of town. Erwin glanced around at the handful of houses that made up the tiny village, waving at a few other ladies as they too left their homes to do morning chores. Her walking pace slowed when she heard an unfamiliar horse whinny. She glanced over her shoulder at the road running through the middle of town, suddenly going wide-eyed. She looked again, her mouth hanging open. Trotting down the road directly for town was the most beautiful horse she had ever seen. His coat was bright gold and glittered in the morning light like diamonds. His long mane and tail were pure white and flowed effortlessly through the air like delicate strands of spider silk. A simple horsehair bridle encircled his nose, and a plain sheepskin bareback pad lay over his back. Her eyes eventually shifted up to the rider. He appeared to be in his mid-twenties, his attire as simple as his mounts. A patched, ivory-colored shirt under a black vest, with simple leather pants and worn boots. It was his face, however, that caught Erewhon's eye. It was rectangular-shaped, with a sharp, masculine jaw and tanned complexion that perfectly offset his burning blue eyes. His dark brown hair flowed freely in wild layers around his face, caressing his neck, just barely brushing his shoulders. The young man was brawny like a farmer, even though a bright sword hung at his side. He angled his horse for the well at the center of town and smiled at one of the patrons standing there. His smile was dazzling. It brightened his whole face with a light that shone from within, making his blue eyes dance. Having forgotten what she was doing, a shock ran through Erewhon when she slammed into the side of the bar. Barn. Oof. She stumbled backwards, tripping over her feet before falling onto her bum. She cringed, then shot a quick glance over her shoulder. A few patrons standing around the well turned to stare at her quizzically. She got to her feet, swinging the barn door open and scrambling inside out of sight as fast as she could. "'Stupid girl!' she admonished herself over and over again, dropping the bucket and resting her hands over her burning cheeks. She started and rested a hand over her quaking heart when the cow bellowed behind her impatiently. "'Oh, do be quiet, you beast! I'll, me I'll milk you in just a moment. Gee whiz, I cannot talk tonight!' <laughs> When she'd had time to calm down, she opened the door a crack and peered out. The stranger had stopped at the well and dismounted. He shook hands with one of the older men before hoisting a water bucket from the well. He poured its contents into a trough for his horse, smiling and answering questions all the while. Once again, Erewhon was taken by his smile. A loud snort was the only warning Erewhon had before something slammed into her from behind punching her past the door and barreling over the top of her. "'You despicable bovine!' she screamed, knowing exactly what it was that had accosted her. She sat up, blinking dust out of her eyes, only to see the cow charge past the well and down the road out of town. Erewhon got to her feet, stumbled a short distance, then cringed, barely able to catch her balance as her right ankle gave out under her. She grabbed a nearby hitching post, leaning against it for support. She lifted the hem of her skirt just the slightest, looking down at her throbbing ankle. She tested her weight on it, sucking in a breath as she did. Thankfully, she could move it and put weight on it. It was just very painful. "'Stay there. I'll fetch her.' Erwan snapped her eyes up and watched as the stranger flipped under the back of his horse, galloping down the road after the cow. His horse pulled up alongside the bawling animal in no time. The stranger leaned sideways, snatching the cow's rope, then sat up and leaned back, bringing them all to a gradual halt. He turned a moment to turn he took a moment oh my goodness. He took a moment to turn several circles with the animals, calming the cow down before turning back to turning toward town and leading it back. That sentence may need reworked. Oh man, sorry guys. Erewhon watched, dumbfounded, as the young stranger led the cow back to her. 
As he approached, they locked eyes for a moment. Erewhon's heart jumped in her chest. She shifted her eyes down, suddenly aware that her dress was filthy and her headscarf disheveled. She glanced back up at the stranger, and to her surprise he smiled at her, a genuine, kind smile that brightened his whole face. A smile crawled across her lips as her heart fluttered. He drew his horse to a halt before her, and the two of them stared at each other for a moment. Um, he looked to the side at the cow. Shall I put the despicable beast in the barn for you? He looked back at Erewhon, his smile turning into a smirk, those blue eyes dancing with amusement. Erewhon shook herself, her smile disappearing as she remembered losing her temper at the animal. Oh, I just called her that. I meant I wasn't really... No, I'll do it, thank you. She pushed her shoulders back and raised her chin, then took a halting step forward and held her hand out for the rope. She clamped her teeth together and mentally slapped herself for stammering like a fool. She was usually much more poised. The stranger's expression turned to one of concern. Are you sure? You're limping. It's normal. Erewhon paused, mentally slapping herself again. I meant it's normal for the cow to behave like this. I'm used to handling her. It'll be fine. As he passed the rope into her hands, her eye was drawn to a silver ring on his forefinger. A brilliant red gem sat in the center, and gold dragons caressed it on either side. It was a lovely ring fit for a king. Erewhon looked back at the young man, her eyes passing over his simple attire. His hands were calloused, his skin tan and rough, and his hair wild and shaggy. His appearance wasn't what she would call noble or kingly. The young man dismounted, taking his horse by the reins, then stared at her, reaching for her face. He suddenly paused, as if catching himself. Her heart raced inside her chest until he lowered his hand. You have something here. He motioned to the right side of his face, then at hers, grimacing. Oh. Erewhon reached up and wiped her hand over a thick layer of dust, her cheek and skin steaming with pain under her hand. She was probably going to have a giant bruise there. She imagined it was red and starting to swell already. Erewhon cleared her throat and looked down at her fate. The stranger did the same. Thank you for fetching the cow, she said, keeping her gaze down. I'm glad I was able to help. She seems like the cantankerous type. Erewhon smiled. That is her most prevailing quality. A voice sounded behind them. That was excellent horsemanship, sir. Oof. English accent, anyone? <laughs> Wow, that was bad. Erewhon almost breathed a sigh of relief when the older man approached, drawing the stranger's attention away. Your steed simply glided through the air and heeded your every command. You say he wasn't born in a keen stable? He was born into a herd of wild horses, the stranger replied. I watched his mother give birth to him and I wiped the blood from his nose. Erewhon glanced up. The herd must not have been so wild then if they let you near them. She instantly regretted letting the words fly past her mouth. The stranger turned back toward her, narrowing his eyes just the slightest. The herd knew me well. I visited them every day and gained their trust. They still trust me to this day. The golden horse pur pushed his nose forward and nudged his rider in the side with a soft nicker. The stranger smiled and wrapped his arm over the horse's neck, hugging him. Help! She's going to kill me! The sudden cry drew everyone's attention to the other side of the village. A boy charged down the road, covered in mud, holding on to the left side of his pants, torn from the belt down to the ankle. Running behind him were two girls. The furthest one was laughing uncontrollably, stumbling as she ran, while the closest one was covered from head to toe in a thick layer of brown mud. "'I'll make you wish you were never born, pig licker! she yelled before stomp it, stopping and throwing three well-aimed rocks at the boy's head. Ow! Ouch! Somebody make her stop! She's gonna kill me! He let go of his pants and dashed across the village, past Erewhon, the cow, and the stranger, and into the barn, slamming the door shut. Erewhon's breath froze in her chest as she watched the mud-covered girl approach them. 
though she could hardly recognize her for all the mud and filth, she knew it was her sister. As the young girl charged past them, the putrid stench of pig feces burned the inside of everyone's noses. The girl ran up to the barn door and grabbed the latch, tugging against it for a moment. She shrieked and stomped her feet when it refused to open, then started slamming her fists against the door. I'll get you, Jeffrey. You had best sleep with one eye open, you prat. I'm going to put a spider's nest in your bed and chip some laxative in your water. Then I'm going to turn your own pigs against you, and we will rise up and start a rebellion against your putrid tyranny and burn you at the stake, naked. The girl stood there, beating the door repeatedly, her face so red it shone through the mud and grime. Erewhon's mouth fell open in shock. Annika! The mud-covered girl spun around, the vicious snarl on her face melting away to one of surprise. Oh! She put a muddy finger up to her lips. I didn't know we had company. The stranger threw his head back with a loud laugh. The old man joined in, and Annika put her hands up to her mouth, giggling. Erewhon felt a fire leap into her cheeks, the heat of embarrassment crawling up her back even as a forbidden smile spread across her lips. "'I'll have to borrow a few of those insults, young lady. They were well delivered,' the stranger said when he had caught his breath. Annika executed a perfect curtsy. "'Thank you, sir. I try my best.' Erewhon cleared her throat, trying to make the smile on her face disappear. They were hardly ladylike, and it's not something you should be proud of. Annika looked at Erewhon, then down at her filth-covered skirts, then back up at Erewhon. Well, I tried to look ladylike this morning, but that toad-eater played a mean trick on me. Since he doesn't appreciate me being ladylike, I might as well become his worst nightmare. She threw a strand of mud-caked hair over her shoulder, then crossed her arms, raising her chin defiantly. She glanced at the stranger, then at Erewhon, a sly smile creeping onto her lips. Annika dropped her arms and put her hands behind her back coyly. "'I'm sorry, Erewhon. Of course you're right. You try to set a good example for me. Kind, proper, hard-working. I guess the other ladies of the village are right.' A good man could help you keep me, your little sister, in line. Erewhon was certain her heart stopped and she was going to die. The old man had a sudden coughing fit. The stranger chuckled, then cleared his throat before turning and mounting his horse. Oh, won't you stay for supper? Annika pleaded as he turned his mount around. Erewhon glared at her sister, then peered up at him. She was surprised to see him give a genuine smile to her sister. Regrettably, I cannot stay. I have many miles to go and little time to cover them. He turned his gaze to Erewhon, and his expression softened. But perhaps I could come again? Erewhon's heart leapt in her chest, and her jaw went slack. You, you would want to come back after all this? Just say yes! Annika hissed behind her. He winked. It's not every day that an entire town treats me to so much adventure. I think it's worth another visit. Annika poked Erewhon's elbow. See yes! Just see it! Erewhon swiped her hand at her sister, her mind reeling. If you feel inclined to visit our humble town again, then by all means, please do. Forgive me if I hope your next visit... Oh, my goodness, I can't speak. Sorry. Forgive me if I hope your next visit visit isn't quite so adventurous, though. His smile grew and he dipped his chin in a nod before turning his horse and trotting away. He's handsome. What is his name? Annika asked. Erewhon blinked, then gasped and took a step forward. Wait, sir, she watched as he halted and spun his horse around. May I have your name? He smiled again. Keegan, yours? It's Erewhon. He nodded again. Till next we meet, Erewhon. His horse spun back around and continued down the road at a brisk trot. Oh, he's so cute! Annika squealed. I hope he comes back soon! Erewhon smiled softly. Till next we meet, Keegan, she whispered.
So, that's chapter five. So let me know what you guys think of it. If you have any working title ideas, go ahead and leave them in a comment. Uh, if there was anything that kind of put you off about it or anything, let me know that too. I handle constructive criticism well. Um, yeah, and if you liked it, of course, let me know if you can. Or hit the like button. That works too. Anyway, uh, so, yeah. And keep up with me on all the social media stuff in the description down below so that you know when I re-release book one and you can get this and the other rewrites that are so much better I promise they are they are way better and you can get all of them whenever I re-release it so thank you all for watching